The time has finally come to discuss the hands down number one reason why most people install Magic Lantern on their cameras. That is raw video. The Magic Lantern features that I've highlighted in prior videos, including the histogram, waveform monitor, vector scope, focus peaking, and zebras, are all extremely helpful and are tools that allow you to squeeze the best performance you can out of the 70D's image capabilities. However, the feature that we will look at today takes the quality of the image that is possible from your 70D to an entirely new level. I was absolutely in awe of the image quality the first time I looked at the converted RAW files, knew that I really couldn't go back to the standard image quality that I was getting out of this camera. It has really changed the game for me. With that said, it is important to bear in mind that Magic Lantern is a program that must operate within the boundaries of a given camera's hardware. And therefore, there are unfortunately certain limitations that currently hinder this camera's ability to use RAW to its fullest extent. In this video, we will take a look at both the wonderful benefits of RAW video on your 70D as well as its current limitations. But in the end, despite its limitations, and even without RAW, Magic Lantern, if it were sold as a standalone software for your camera, would be worth hundreds of dollars, and we are able to install it on our 70Ds for free. I think I speak for all 70D owners when I say thank you to all the developers who have worked on this project, and all the folks at Magic Lantern Forum who have taken the time to make this available for all of us, and who field our questions. So without further ado, let's take a look at raw video on the Canon 70D. Alright, first things first, just to get you guys all excited about what we will be talking about, let's take a quick look at some raw footage from my 70D. Note that the footage we will look at has been color corrected so that they each look close to each other in color. However, this is not a stylistic grade. Here we have a shot of the lovely Karen and Chanel in very bright sunny conditions. I'm using a variable ND filter, however you can see that it is still a very bright setting. The first clip is the regular 70D footage in the standard picture profile, and then with some color corrections. Now we have the neutral picture profile which has contrast and saturation lowered. And in both of these, you can see that I've tried to save some of that highlight detail. Okay, and here it is, raw footage from the 70D. Just look at how much of that highlight detail you can save and how much those colors pop. Let's take a look at these shots side by side so that you can really see the incredible quality of the raw footage. Here's another shot in a darker setting with the sun fading away. Again, this is the 70D in the standard picture profile. This is the 70D in the neutral picture profile. And here is the raw footage. Let's also take a look at these shots side by side. Just amazing stuff that you can get out of raw on this camera. And I for one am extremely excited to have this functionality at my disposal. Before we discuss raw specifically on the 70D, let's take a step back and talk about raw generally for those people who may be less familiar with it. I'm not going to be getting into MLV in this video, and I will just be discussing the raw functionality. So what is raw video? Raw image files are minimally compressed files that use data straight from the camera's sensor, and which does not go through the camera's typical processing functions. As a result, you have a file that has data which is basically uncompressed, but that cannot be edited in an editing program like Premiere Pro or Final Cut, and must be first converted to a file format suitable for editing. A way of thinking about a raw image file is like the digital analog of a film negative. Negatives have all the information necessary, but are not usable until they are developed. The same is true with raw image files. Most professional photographers, for example wedding or other event photographers, shoot their photos in RAW. Now it is one thing to shoot photos with RAW image files because it is only one frame. However, when you shoot RAW video, the process is a bit more involved. When people refer to RAW video, they are generally referring to the post-conversion or post-developed video that is made up of all the RAW images. How do you convert RAW image files to RAW video? RAW image files generally have extensions like .arw, .crw, .raw, and there are several others. And these files contain lots of camera sensor and image metadata. These files are not designed to be edited in a video editing program and must first be converted. The first step in the conversion process is generally to convert the files into Cinema DNG files. Cinema DNG is a file format created by Adobe, which is created primarily for more easily handling raw image files for use in video editing software. There are several programs out there which are made for this conversion process, including Raw Magic for Mac and Raw 2 DNG for Windows. As you can see here, I am converting a .raw file using Raw Magic, which is a very smooth process and converts the raw files into Cinema DNG files very quickly.
Once you have your folder of Cinema DNG files, you can now import them into After Effects. Note that you cannot import these directly into Premiere Pro, and you must first create a video file in After Effects. You can also input the DNG files directly into Photoshop and make the necessary tweaks in Camera Raw there. And then you can save the files as an image sequence for importing into Premiere Pro, similar to how you do a time lapse. The best part about working with RAW is that because of all the metadata that is contained in the file, upon importing these files into After Effects, you can adjust many of the image's settings in a non-destructive process in Camera Raw. There are many things that you can tweak in a non-destructive way upon importing the RAW files, including white balance, exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, clarity, vibrance, saturation, and many others. Be sure to change the FPS to the correct FPS you shot in, and also make sure to change the bit settings to be 16 or 32. Since RAW is in 14-bit color, you do not want to keep your composition in 8-bit. What are the benefits of shooting in RAW? Normal footage shot on the 70D takes the image from the sensor and puts it through various processes. Some for image quality purposes like contrast, saturation, and denoising, and others for compression, in order for people to have more workable file sizes. With the 70D, you can shoot in 8-bit color, which means that the maximum number of colors that can be displayed at any one time is 256. However, with RAW, you can shoot uncompressed 14-bit video straight from the camera sensor, giving you a color palette of over 16,000 colors. This provides for much greater color variety and much smoother color transitions. Just look at the difference in the colors. As you can see, the colors you are able to get out of this camera with RAW just blow the normal footage out of the water due to the higher color depth. So what are the costs of shooting in RAW? The primary negative when you are shooting in RAW is the workflow. One component of this is the size of the files. Even with just a 6 second clip, when you consider the RAW file, all the DNG files, and the RAW video file, it can be fairly large, and as we see here, a six second clip is around 1.76 gigabytes. While the same shot, when it is a normal 70D compressed file, is about 184 megabytes. Another component is how much memory RAW chews up. During the editing process, your editing software will be constantly using your RAM, and when you work with RAW files, your RAM is being pushed into overdrive. I currently have 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM in my computer, and I was having issues with my RAM usage going very high, and often hovering between 60 and 70%. If I intend to do a lot of editing and layering with RAW, I would definitely want to bump up my RAM to at least 32 gigabytes. A third component is the process. Having to convert your RAW files to Cinema DNG files and then importing those into After Effects and then rendering that in order to have a usable video file is a very time intensive process. And many people who can choose not to shoot with RAW because it is not necessary for what they do and it would slow them down considerably. So let's talk about RAW on the Canon 70D. The first step in this process is obviously installing Magic Lantern on your camera. I will put up an annotation on the screen now to the installation guide for the latest version of Magic Lantern. Please click on that video if you still need to install the program. Once installed on your camera, you will need to make sure that you have installed the RAW Rec module in the Modules tab. 
Once that module has been installed properly, you can enable RAW recording in the Movies tab. Hit the Q button and adjust the various settings, including the desired resolution. As you will see, the resolutions range from 640x360 all the way up to 3584x2016. And as you go down in resolution, portions of the image are being cut off. Let's take a look at the size of 720p when you record. Due to the write speed limitations of the 70D, the current max resolution that you can get at a 16 by 9 aspect ratio is 1824 by 1026. Obviously, this is below full HD resolution of 1920 by 1080. Also, while Magic Lantern states that the required write speed for this resolution is only 74.9 megabits per second at 23.98 frames per second, even with my SanDisk Extreme Pro, I'm only able to get about 6 to 7 seconds worth of footage before it automatically shuts off. Here is a chart that shows the various resolutions and the Magic Lantern indicated write speed, as well as the amount of recording time that I was actually able to achieve at those resolutions. As you can see, you unfortunately cannot shoot in RAW on the 70D for every occasion, unless you are okay shooting at resolutions well below Full HD. If you are shooting a film, for instance, it is just not possible to shoot only 6-7 to seven second shots. Let's take a look at the difference between max resolution and a resolution like 720p that you are able to record for unlimited periods. As you can see, the resolution does suffer a good deal, but it is not terrible or unusable footage, and still has the great color depth of RAW. Here is a low light shot, comparing the raw footage to the normal 70D footage and footage from the A7S. In terms of low light capability, having that greater color depth does help compared to the normal footage. However, you are still using the 70D sensor, and so when comparing the footage to something like the Sony A7S, even with raw, the A7S wins every time. So there you have it guys, this is the current state of RAW video on the Canon 70D. I think the image is absolutely stunning, and the normal footage really cannot keep up. However, there are limitations to the resolution that you are currently able to achieve on this camera. But in the end, Magic Lantern is a free software that unlocks utterly incredible features on your camera. And while I don't think that I can use my 70D for shooting a film in RAW, I will undoubtedly be using its RAW functions as much as possible. Alright, thanks for watching everyone, and please feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments. If you liked the video, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe for more content. Thanks.